the practice is practicing changing your habits, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you think. And you work on the areas where you see that you have problems. But sometimes your vision is obscured. There are a lot of things that other people can see that you can't see. To say nothing of your mind, just your own body. There are a lot of parts of your own body you never see directly. You have to use a mirror, and even in some cases it's one mirror is not enough. And so we benefit from the perspective that other people have, even more so with our actions and our words. People can see things in what we do that we don't see, which is one of the reasons why we practice not totally alone. We have our time together as a group. And the Buddha instituted it so that at least three months out of the year the monks would live together, take, take time to train together, and as a result they get to know one another. So the very last day of the rains is the day of the call the Great Invitation, the Mahabharata. Each monk invites the other monks, if you've seen or heard or suspected that I've done something against the rules, please let me know, and I'll do my best to make amends. Throughout the year, of course, monks are enjoined to treat criticism with respect, but this is one day where they actually invite it, because they've lived with one another for three months, you know one another. And if someone is going to make an accusation, well, you know the accuser, too. The monks are in a good position to judge the facts of the case. But you can benefit in any written from the perspective of other people. So as I said, this is why throughout the year we're told to respect people who criticize us. We don't show disrespect to them. Because who knows, if someone has noticed something about you, your behavior that you hadn't noticed yourself. And we're here to improve ourselves, because after all, that's what the message of the Four Noble Truths is. There are a lot of things you're doing that are creating suffering. You don't have to do them, but you have to change your habits. So in areas that you don't see where you're doing something wrong, but someone else can see, okay, it's to your advantage to hear that, to be open to that. As the Buddha said, regard the person who points out your faults as someone who points out hidden treasure. Something that's been hidden from you for a long time, and now you see, oh yes, it is negative, it is harmful, and I can change. When you have that attitude, then people's criticism of you is not a bad thing. There's this strange movement in a modern society that if you say something negative to somebody, you're harming that person. You harm people only when you get them to do unskillful things. And sometimes people need to know what's negative about themselves so they can improve. There's even the case where the Buddha said that he would say things that were displeasing, in the same way that if you have a child and the child gets a sharp object in its mouth, then you have to make sure you get the sharp object out, even if it means drawing blood, because you want to make sure that the child doesn't swallow the object and create even more damage. In the same way, sometimes you have to warn people that their behavior is out of line for their own good. But behind all of this is compassion and goodwill. Criticism offered in compassion and with goodwill is a lot more effective than criticism that's offered in anger or with contempt. So learn how to accept criticism and also learn how to give criticism. That way the fact that we're living together doesn't become an obstacle to the practice, it actually becomes an aid.